How does one apply cartography to time travel? Well, again, time travel is not necessarily confined to being travel along the time axis only. It can also be combined with space travel over both long and short distances. So, for example, say you wanted to plan a car trip from point A to point B. Well, you would look at what roads took you what way. Some roads may be larger and thus faster, as well as more direct. Other roads may be more rustic and thus slower, as well as more winding. So you plot your choice of way to go. And this is planning the distance metric or the space part of your trip. If you want to know how long it will take you to get to your destination, you will have to look at what the speed limits are on the roads you chose to take and decide your pace accordingly. This is the duration metric or the time part of planning one's trip. So that is a basic example of how one can use a map to plan a trip through both space and time. Just the same if one wants to travel at FTL speeds from planet A to planet B, one has to plot a course that avoids all mass shadows, gravity wells, and other forms of distortion to space-time that, that might impede one's way. In order to do this, one has to have up-to-date stellar cartography files that chart the local terrain of the space-time continuum, including, especially, all potential pitfalls. So, again, because travel at the fixed rate of light speed, one Planck distance per one Planck time, is similar to going 60 miles per hour or a mile a minute, the duration of one's trip at such a velocity depends more upon whether one chooses to go the long way or the short way in terms of distance. For the briefest trip, one travels the fastest speed on the most direct and shortest distance roads. The process of mapping space-time is essentially the same as making a geographic map of the surface of Earth, however, in outer space, the obstacles one may encounter are rarely aligned along a horizontal planar surface, but will need to be gone around in any of the six possible directions of three space. Such stellar cartography and road maps are still mostly maps of space, though, not so much of time alone. A true time map would not just plot the present locations of changing conditions, such as space weather or terrestrial climate patterns, but be symbolic of the topography and terrain of time, the seventh direction of local space-time, as a thing in itself. A time map would have to reduce time by one dimension from what it is measuring, just as a map of 3D space represents this on a plain 2D surface. Therefore, because time is at least one half of the fourth spatial dimension, a map of time that is required to reduce the terrain by one dimension to represent it pictographically would be a three-dimensional map. Perhaps this implies only a moving 3D hologram is sufficient to represent the change that defines time, and a lesser, flat, 2D time map may be impossible. Then again, a flip book with a timeline animated along the edges of its flat 2D pages may be able to accomplish the trick by way of optical illusion, even if not being a precisely accurate depiction. It may be difficult to explain a time map to one who's never imagined one as a concept, but technically a calendar is one already particularly the planetary ephemeris of phases and alignments associated with the local planets relative to the position of Earth. These prove immensely important in both mental-only, remote-viewing types of time travel experiments, 
but also in actual time jumps from one location on Earth's surface to another across a vast duration of time. Over time, the Earth changes locations in outer space, so one appearing at just the right place in space and time is essential to surviving a time jump. Ten kilometers undershot, and you could appear floating outside Earth's atmosphere. Five meters overshot, and you could appear buried alive underground or half immersed in a bulkhead, like allegedly happened to the sailors of the USS Eldridge during the Philadelphia experiment. <laughs>